How's it going, guys? It's Rami here, and Jikus Gamer. And uh, today, I got a special video. Um, this is not really something I normally do on this channel. I mostly just do like video game stuff and streams. But um, I don't know. I decided to make a video of this today. So over here, I have my 386 computer. This is the first computer that I ever used in my life. This was my first personal computer. My dad gave this to me when he upgraded to the 486 back in the day and I just played this in the lobby of his office all the time and have a lot of good memories with this thing. There's nothing wrong with it, it works. Um, I powered this thing on when I restored the 486 back in like 2016. But uh, there's a few things that here that I want to sort out. First of all, it doesn't have any sound. Like I have a sound card, but it doesn't really produce anything. And I have... Um, this megahertz display here doesn't display anything. I mean, it never did, even when I was a kid. And um, I'm not, like, super confident that I'm about to get it working, but I'm going to try, you know. If it doesn't work, big deal. You know, what am I? What do I have to lose? I never saw it work anyway. But, um, <laughs> so, yeah, sound, um, uh, sound, megahertz display, kind of megahertz display, and floppy drive. Those are the goals of restoring this computer and what that's going to be. And, um, yeah, it's going to be a fun journey. Um, I just I wonder how it's going to turn out. <laughs> so here's what it looks like from the inside. Um, here's the sound card I was, I was mentioning. This thing uh, is like a really crappy sound card for DOS games. It's really just, it does not even have an OPL. Not an OPL 2 or a 3. It's just a generic... Sound Blaster, and believe it or not, it's from 1995. I don't know what the hell it's doing in this computer. It's a very later sound card. But, anyway, I'll show you what I'm going to replace this thing with. So this, right here, is an AdLib card. This is not the original AdLib card. Uh, it's actually a replica. The board was um, designed by Tube Time, or at least not designed, but reverse engineered. And, um, yeah, this is what I plan to use in, th in the 386, so we're going to install that. And we're also going to, you know, kind of clean it up, give it a little compressed air. It's pretty dusty down there. I wrote my name, as you can see, in the dust just because I was bored. But, um, yeah, this should be a fun project. This is actually the first time I've taken uh, the motherboard out of this case. I don't, I don't think I've ever done this before in my life. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it'll be a pretty interesting experience. So I have a video card, sound card, controller card and a networking card, I guess. Alright, here's the sound card I was talking about. Take a look at this thing. Let me put it right here. See that? Uh, Creative Technology 1995. This thing's like, has no business being in a 386 machine. CT2940. Yeah, so... We're going to replace that with the ad lib. This is the video card. Take a look at that. Look at it. Look at all those chips. I love these vintage VGA cards. Really cool. All right, so now the video card and the the sound card and all the other cards are taken out. So the next step is to unscrew the the case from from here. Very much like my 486, this thing will just, like, drop down. And the motherboard slides out. Although I'm not sure how that motherboard mechanism works. What's holding it in place like that. Let's see. But we're gonna figure out in the video. Maybe I should have done this in the other way. I, <laughs> I should have did it like 
the top ones, then the middle ones, then the bottom ones, but whatever, I wasn't thinking. Which is a common habit that I have. All right. Aha, yep, this is exactly how it looked in the pinout that I read. The shape of the board and everything. Looks like I can't get it down as far as I would like. But this is good enough. I just need to be able to solder the battery. Um, let me flip the, right onto there. Uh, where is it? Right there. Yes, there. So years ago, my dad, you know, D, years ago, my dad dewired the PC speaker, this computer, or like he cut the wires, and there it is right there. So yeah, I just need to rewire that, and we'll have hopefully have PC speaker functioning. Um, yeah, and also I think I discovered the issue with the turbo button switch. Um, the turbo. The the I think the the brown and black cable uh, wire for the turbo switch was plugged into the turbo LED um, leads uh, the, or the header on the board. So I think I need to just switch that with the this green one that's coming out or not? Uh, was it the, yeah, this green one right here, the green and black. I don't know if that's what's the problem is, but. You know, it might work. But that PC speaker, uh, that's definitely, yeah. I'm going to definitely fix that. All right. Here's my motherboard. So now that we have the uh, motherboard outside of the case, I'm going to take this opportunity to sort of clean the inside of this case. Don't have much Windex left, but I'm going to use what I do have. So I do have enough to clean this computer. Oh man, oh man, look how nasty that is. Oh my god. Yeah, that's freaking disgusting. Look at that shit. Let me get some more of that. I gotta go for another round. There we go, it's starting to look better. Alright, I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for this because um, I used another barrel, ba barrel battery in there, a nickel cadmium or nickel MH, whatever the hell that element is. Um, yeah, I really, um, I don't know how to install one of those CR2032 sockets in there, so... Until I figure out how to do that, I'm just going to use this as a temporary solution. So, yeah, there it is. Okay, so. I'm going to put these cards back now. Here's the first one that goes in there, which is the hard disk and floppy disk controller. There we go. There we go. Snug fit right there. Here's the, the main attraction, the ad lib. This is a, this is not the real ad lib, obviously. As I mentioned earlier, it's the replica from Tube Time. This just fits in the 8-bit slot right here. Let 
There we go. Nice and tight. Sleds right into place. Video card. Hang on a second. Stop. All right, video card in there now. And this is the parallel and com and serial. Pretty tight fit right there. All right, so got these wires exposed and now I'm gonna connect them. get my hands in this case but there we go just like that I know I'm a soldering novice, but there we go. Yeah, one down. Oh crap. I should be, I, I guess I should have a fan in my face to keep the solder from being breathed in. All right, now, just to protect it. That wasn't that good. There we go, there's one down. two down. All right, here's the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing works. No megahertz display. Got power LED though. And it looks like we got a signal, which I already knew we were gonna get anyway. There's the... RAM counting up. We got four megabytes. And of course the CMOS uh, is not set because we just put in a new battery. <sighs> I'm going to see what I can do to get that megahertz display working, but at least I got the PC speaker working. Because I heard, I, I just heard that, so that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. If I can't get the megahertz display working, I might just throw in the towel on it because that's such a pain in the ass to get working. But oh well, at least I got a working 386 with a working floppy drive and PC speaker now because none of those were working uh, when I was a kid. So yeah, at least we got some progress in that field. Alright, so I just wrote the settings into the CMOS. Let's see if we get boot into Windows 3.1 boom baby we're in <laughs> yeah oh my god Yeah, look at those bars rolling up the screen. Ah, you like that? Oh my god, dude. Oh my god, it's been so long since I've seen this, man. Oh man, let's play some Wolfenstein 3D. Yeah, baby. Oh my god. 
This is amazing. Got this PC speaker. Let's see if the ad lib works. Oh my, the ad lib works, bro. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. You have no idea. Oh my god, dude. That ad lib sounds beautiful, too. Oh my god. There's literally like no noise at all. It's pure synthesis. Let's see how how the game runs. Let's see how choppy it is. Cause I, I remember this game being playable, but quite choppy. <laughs> ah! Still playable. <laughs> So that ad lib was a really damn good upgrade. Oh man, Wolf 3D with ad lib is amazing. <laughs> anyway. Let's try out Superplex. I wonder how that works. Oh man, although we do get some weird noise when it's static screen. But that's probably because I have the speakers turned up very loud. I need to turn the wheel up on the ad lib, you know? The the ad lib is in the middle, I think. Oh listen, oh listen, listen, listen. It's not loud, but you can hear it. Anyway, <laughs> I don't have the mouse set up in Superplex at the moment, so I can't really change the... Or, I mean, in, in this computer yet. I gotta do some config.sys auto exec stuff before I can get the mouse running. But, um, when I was a kid, I never played this with a mouse. But this is amazing that I actually have ad lib sound on this computer now. So, yeah. Um, anyway... <clears throat> I will post an update if I get this megahertz display working soon. But yeah, that's the 386. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this restoration video. Because, um, it was fun to do. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to Superplex, because I have a file on here that's really far. And, uh... Well... I gotta finish some unfinished business, <laughs> so take care guys.